Hey everyone, how's it going? It's been a while, and today we're going to return to the first form Pokemon with one that should be very interesting, Ponyta. The reason Ponyta is so interesting is that of all first form Pokemon, it has the best base statistics by far. In fact, with a very nice 69 average in base stats, it ties pretty good Pokemon such as Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee. So on the surface, this looks like it's going to be great, right? Well, then we look at the moveset. Ponyta can learn a total of 11 attacking moves. One of those is Rage, which I ranked as one of the worst moves of all time. And so, will Ponyta's amazing base stats make up for its horrendous move pool? Only one way to find out. And of course, Brock is not going to be super easy considering we have a not very effective move, but there is something kind of lucky. Ponyta, unlike other fire Pokemon, at least starts with a fire move. It won't learn any other move via level up for a while, but Ember at least deals special damage which means that Geodude and Onix don't resist it super well. While I did battle a bunch of trainers beforehand, in my very first attempt versus Brock, I was able to beat both the Geodude and, of course, the Onix without too much difficulty. Not much to talk about, obviously, since I literally had just one move. However, I was going to have a lot more trouble coming up because the next gym leader is Misty, who has water Pokemon. That's not going to be great, so instead we're going to go battle Rival 2. This went terribly, and the biggest reason is actually Pidgeotto. You see, Pidgeotto is fairly strong for the early game, hits fairly hard, and I don't have a strategy. Like I just said before, I literally have one move. There are no TMs I can learn, there's nothing. Not even a Growl, Tail Whip, anything like that, not that it would really matter since the only move I have is Ember. And so I just kind of had to hope Pidgeotto would faint and it didn't. And when it didn't, it lowered my accuracy with Sand Attack. And the rare time I'd make it with decent accuracy to Squirtle, all it needs to do is use Water Gun and yeah, beautiful. I possibly could have battled more trainers and been at a higher level, and perhaps if I were to redo this run, that's what I would end up doing. But at this point in time, my only options really are to either completely start the run again, or to deposit all the Pokemon I have for HMs and just battle Rival 2 again and again, knocking out the Pidgeotto, Rattata, and Abra bunch, and gaining enough experience until I can knock out the Squirtle. That's what I ended up doing. Maybe I should have reset, I don't know if it would have actually made that much of a difference. I did battle a ton of extra trainers. Eventually, after leveling up a couple of times, I was able to defeat the rival, and I wish I had some really cool and epic story to tell you about how I outsmarted Red and Blue, but realistically it came down to Pidgeotto not using Sand Attack, Abra of course not really doing anything because it's Abra, Rattata not doing anything and failing the Tail Whip, and Squirtle only using Water Gun a single time as opposed to two or three. So yeah, there's really not much more to this run early on, and it's part of the reason that Pokemon like Ponyta weren't ones I was super excited to run, because it is a little frustrating to have to use a Pokemon where I'm not really able to utilize my creativity, which is what I do try and do on these runs. Anyway, that said, after I get past this brief area of the game, I am going to skip Misty because we will make our way to the SSN. And thankfully, while Ponyta only gets 11 attacking moves, one of them being Ember by the way, so 10 others, at the very least, Body Slam is among them. And... Without Body Slam, oh god, this run could have been really bad. And in order to demonstrate this, let's look at the Rival 3 battle, one you wouldn't even expect Body Slam to be super great with, but actually made a huge difference. Because even if I get my accuracy lowered by Pidgeotto, which does happen, Body Slam deals so much damage to all the remaining Pokemon 
that unless I get super unlucky with War Turtle, well, I should have won, and I do the very next attempt. Again, not much more to say, I'm just kind of hoping for decent RNG, as well as maybe a paralysis on the War Turtle. Fun fact, you can't actually paralyze either the Pidgeotto or the Raticate with Body Slam. You see, Generation 1 didn't want Fire Pokemon being burned, so they did something kind of funny. And on the surface, it makes a lot of sense. Don't want Fire Pokemon burned? Don't allow a secondary effect by a fire move. And to be honest, for the most part, this works. Ice Pokemon won't get frozen, Fire Pokemon won't get burned, Poison Pokemon won't get poisoned. It's honestly a pretty good idea on the surface, if only they made an exception for Body Slam, since it's a normal move, which paralyzes, and while you'd think, oh, it just wouldn't paralyze electric Pokemon, that's not how they did it. The move type is normal, and therefore it cannot status normal Pokemon. So anytime you wonder why the normal Pokemon isn't getting paralyzed, that is why. The more you know. Anyway, I have made it back to Cerulean City, and you might think Misty is going to be difficult. You would be wrong. Staryu is a one-hit KO with Body Slam, as for Star Me, I get the Paralysis, and as long as I don't get Bubble Beam, I win. In fact, I could have won even with Bubble Beam, assuming I'd healed like I probably should have. But that's neither here nor there. Misty was expected to be difficult and wasn't. Score 1 for Ponyta. Unfortunately, if you want to do Misty at the end, you have to skip Lieutenant Surge. Going back to battle him right now would take too much time. So instead, we're going to go into Rock Tunnel. There is a trainer in Rock Tunnel I'm sure you're all worried about if you've been watching these videos. The famous hiker with the exploding Geodude and Graveler. Will I be able to defeat him? The answer is no, the run is dead. Of course I'm able to defeat him. And unfortunately, we have to resort to the same sort of strategy as before. Use Ember, hope we don't get self-destruct. We can afford one, but not two, and it took me a few attempts, but as you can see, eventually I was able to win, not with a lot of HP, mind you, but winning is the important thing here. After making it through Rock Tunnel, I had to make a decision. Where to go next? Let's go to the place I forget the most, Erica's Gym, and I'm not actually going to defeat Erica, but that's only because of something dumb that happened. I'm going to defeat all the trainers because I'm aware that eventually we're going to hit a wall. We don't have a lot of good attacking moves. I'm not going to make the same mistake I made with Rival 2. I'm going to level up against easy trainers. Unfortunately, one of the trainers in Erica's gym paralyzed me. So I had to go back and heal. And since I had to go back and heal, I decided that I would go battle Erica later and instead actually go and backtrack to Vermilion and defeat Surge, who I might forget otherwise. Lieutenant Surge was pretty easy. One body slam, ah, ah, ah. Two body slams, ah, ah, ah. Three, oh, no, okay, well, almost three. I don't know, I don't even want to do it there, but the fact of the matter is, yes, it was easy, and you guys have been asking me to do the voice. To be honest, I don't want to be one of those shows where the same meme is repeated over and over, and no, whatever content creator you think I'm taking a swipe at, I am not. One of the most popular animated shows of all time literally has this style of humor. A lot of internet shows like Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridged use this. I'm just saying that I'm as guilty as anyone, and I know you guys like it, but the joke is dead. I, I will use it sparingly from here on out, but you guys really seem to miss it, so... I figured one last hurrah. I've been gone a while. Anyway, now that we've beaten Lieutenant Surge, let's go and defeat Erica. Now, you might think you're a fire Pokemon, use fire moves, right? Wrong! Still, Body Slam is better because of the Paralysis chance. It would be nicer if these were two hit KOs instead of three hit KOs, but I get pretty good RNG. I should win either way because Erica's not going to do much to me considering she really only has grass moves and Tangela, which, I mean, yeah. So, a pretty easy victory. I am happier that I did not forget about her in the game. I did forget about her in the voiceover almost. So this is actually a future Jairos correcting his mistake. Meaning even when I don't forget Erica, I forget about Erica. 
Regardless, after I defeated her, I went to go battle Giovanni. But one thing I neglected to mention that I did before battling Surge is I went shopping. One of the things I bought was not a damaging move, but a status move, Reflect. Reflect is super cheap in Generation 1. I'm going to set it up right away. It lasts until the end of the battle, so long as I don't switch out my Pokemon. So in solo runs, it's one of the cheapest moves you can imagine. Permanent Reflect. That's pretty awesome. And with that, plus all the moves I have, I'm easily able to knock out Giovanni's Pokemon. While I know this is a bit more creative than we've been thus far, the bar is pretty darn low considering we haven't even really even had four moves to use, let alone having any sort of picking process as to which moves we want. Now that Giovanni is done, we can go and battle Rival 4. And like all the battles we've just seen, Rival 4 is not a chore. We use Body Slam, and his Pokémon fall to the floor. Fainted. I don't know, I tried to rhyme as long as possible. Thankfully, this run so far is really living up to the hype, at least the hype of Ponyta's base stats. While we had a hiccup, right now it appears like Ponyta may in fact make a bit of a surge, no pun intended there, and maybe even can combat with Pokemon who did minimum battles like Poliwag or Ghastly. The big question is going to be after Rival 4. This is when the game gets really tough and I have to make a decision where I want to go next. I decided to go and battle Koga. However, I didn't battle him right away. I first went through the gym and battled all the trainers that I could in order to gain enough experience points that I would get the move Fire Spin. Now, Fire Spin is an incredibly cheap move, and I'll show you some failed Koga battles while we talk about it. Fire Spin is just like Wrap or Bind, and those moves in Generation 1 were very cheap. While it is only 15 base power, the Pokémon that is hit by Fire Spin cannot move until it is done. And if you go first and keep out speeding and keep hitting, the Pokémon will never move. So just use that for the rest of the run, right? Well, not exactly. While Fire Spin can be pretty helpful, it has a very significant disadvantage, which is its accuracy. It's only 70% accurate, even less than Wrap or Bind. Having a 30% chance to miss is extremely significant, and while using it against Koga makes things pretty easy, I'd like to rely on it as little as possible. The strategy I'm trying to use is simple. Whittle down their HP with Fire Spin, knock them out with Body Slam or Ember. Of course, that wasn't working because Fire Spin would miss too much, and even though Ponyta is fairly decently leveled, Koga's Pokemon hit reasonably hard, especially Weezing with Self Destruct, which pretty much will knock me out at full HP. In a winning battle, however, I decided to make a slight modification to my strategy. For the first three Pokemon, we use Fire Spin and Body Slam strats, and I get extremely, extremely lucky that I have a ton of HP for Weezing. I go for Fire Spin, then realize, hey, if I set up Reflect and it goes for Self Destruct, I win. And I, I was pretty happy. I do a lot of these runs, it takes a lot for me to genuinely jump out of my chair. Gonna be honest, that is a moment I wish we had the camera on because I predicted it would use self-destruct. It was basically a one in four chance. I got it and Ponyta survived. I was very pleased with myself, not gonna lie. So we have gotten through Koga, pretty cool. Now we gotta go battle everyone's favorite J Rose 11 meme, Rival Fievel. My first battle with Rival Fievel seems to be going pretty well. I'm getting through quite a few of the rival's Pokemon. Maybe you think we're gonna win, right? Unfortunately, no. Blastoise does have terrible offensive moves. In fact, until it gets Hydro Pump, its only level up water moves are Water Gun and Bubble. You never really think about that because Bubble Beam and Surf are moves you get naturally in the game, but the opponent Pokemon can only use moves via level up in red and blue. So it's a pretty big disadvantage. Nonetheless, it still did enough to knock me out. So I need to level up just a little bit more. That's not a big problem because eventually it is going to know Hydro Pump. And if I'm already losing to Water Gun, I mean, unless I get a miss, I'm going to lose to Hydro Pump, right? So it makes sense. In the successful battle, I get pretty darn lucky. 
Pidgeot, I get pretty average luck against, but I'm able to critical hit the Growlithe. Don't think that could have done much, but still decent. I get a critical hit against the Execute, which is not guaranteed it'll be a one-hit KO and can annoy me with status moves, so that's good. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to one-shot Alakazam, which was what I wanted to do, and that's why I leveled up. But I got the Retroactive Potion, so it didn't end up mattering, and the real luck came against Blastoise, because although it does know the damaging moves Water Gun and Bubble, it also knows the non-damaging move Withdraw, and I get quite a few withdraws. And, well, that doesn't do anything. Unfortunately, my Body Slam started doing so little I switched to Ember, but with a nice amount of HP, I am able to defeat Rival Fival and move on to the last third of the game, really. As I battle Giovanni, I know you guys enjoy when I tell you a bit of the meta information in me making these videos, so Ponyta is really illustrating why I like Generation 1 run so much. Yes, they're simple, but think of the way the narrative goes. You got the difficult in the beginning, this second third, which seems pretty easy, and then we get to the final third. Typically, it's really difficult, but if it ends up being easy, I mean, it's a good change of pace. The story is just so good in Generation 1 from a video content perspective. It lends itself to a very interesting and engaging narrative. I mean, yes, I'm sure I play a part in that too, but Generation 1 is really, really good, much better than other generations like 2 and 5. Anyway, I beat Giovanni, and now I gotta decide whether I wanna go to Blaine or Sabrina. The choice was actually simple. I'm gonna go to Blaine, that's for two reasons. One, I'll finally get a good fire move and fire blast. And two, we haven't talked about badge boost glitches yet, but they're going to come into play. For those of you who are new, the badge boost glitch is an unavoidable mechanic in Generation 1, where anytime your stats are modified, all your stats that you have badges for get a 12.5% boost. I usually talk about them in the Elite Four when I have all the badges, but it's every odd number gym that gives you a boost. Brock gives attack, Lieutenant Surge gives defense, Koga gives speed, and Blaine gives special, which will help versus Sabrina. Thankfully, Blaine is pretty easy with the moves we have right now. But before I even battle him, I'm anticipating a very difficult Elite Four. There is a specific Pokemon I'm thinking about, and rather than double back, might as well battle trainers in the gym that will be very easy. Note that when you defeat a gym leader, the trainers stick around, but they can no longer be battled. So if I rush to battle Blaine right away, I'll lose this precious opportunity to knock out a bunch of Pokemon that give a lot of experience and don't take very long to knock out. In terms of beating Blaine, the strategy once again is fairly simplistic. Gonna set up a Reflect and then just keep going for Body Slam. Unfortunately, the Growlithe does get a critical hit, which ignores Reflect. That said, Ponyta does not get a critical hit, so I can knock it out in two hits. Rapidash's Tail Whip fails. Again, a two-hit KO. Arcanon, on the other hand, that takedown did quite a lot of damage. Thankfully, it goes for Roar, getting bad luck with Paralysis. Super Potion's a little scary, I might lose, and critical hit. Looks like I won. Hooray. The crit from the Growlithe made this a little closer, but at the end of the day, what I really could have done if I was worried is leveled up to level 48 and gotten agility, which would have raised my attack and made this far easier. But we didn't even need to do that. No badge boost for us. Speaking of which, we're actually not going to use any badge boost versus Sabrina either. Before I battle her, the same thing I said about Blaine's gym applies to hers. Lots of Pokemon that will easily be knocked out that I cannot battle once I defeat her. And defeat her I will very easily. Kadabra is a one-hit KO. Mr. Mime, I don't think that crit mattered, but maybe it did. Venomoth would have been one-hit KO by Fire Blast. I went for the safer play. Poison Powder didn't matter. Alakazam, I don't one-shot, but Psybeam did so little to me. We are absolutely crushing this part of the game. However, now we're about to face the ground gym. Once again, we're going to battle some trainers, so you're going to see my level up, but 
Also, Giovanni might be legitimately difficult, no? This time, I am going to use Agility to raise my special slightly. In fact, while I'm setting up, Rhyhorn hits me with Tail Whip. So that is four badge boosts. I go for Fire Blast. 15% chance it misses, which it doesn't. One down. Doug Trio, I'll easily outspeed with all those agilities. Body Slam does more than enough to knock it out. Needle Queen's special is decent. We knock it out with Fire Blast. I'm pretty sure that means we also knock out Nido King. One more Pokemon remaining, Rhydon, which can do almost nothing to me. Unfortunately, though, we level up. I'll talk about why that's bad in just a second. We crit with the Fire Blast, so that actually wouldn't have mattered. Rhydon survives on just a sliver of health. It goes for Fissure. Cannot affect me because I'm at a higher level. Crit with Body Slam. That crit may have actually mattered. We knock out Rhydon. Very solid battle against Giovanni. In terms of why the level up is bad, unfortunately the badge boost glitch resets every time you level up. So it is imperative that I make sure I don't level up in the middle of battles when I want to use it. I also should address something that comes up a lot in the comment section. Why even use the badge boost glitch? Isn't this supposed to be glitchless? True, but what about that tail whip from Rhyhorn? It's going to happen whether or not I intend it to. So what? Do I just keep resetting until the Rhyhorn uses Tail Whip a few times? Would that also be exploiting the badge boost glitch? Perhaps. But let me put this another way. While Ponyta doesn't get Swords Dance, certain Pokemon do. And that will inadvertently raise speed. So what? Can I no longer use Swords Dance anymore? Do I need to ban all stat boosting moves? No, that just seems silly to me. Like the 1 in 256 chance that you have on any given move to miss, in my mind, the badge boost glitch is just a feature of Generation 1. An unintended one, a glitchy feature for sure, but one that's just a part of the game that's impossible to get around in my opinion, so we might as well use it to our advantage, rather than doing something silly like hoping Rhyhorn uses Tail Whip because that would help me. That just seems silly, and what, am I supposed to reset every time Rhyhorn uses Tail Whip? It just feels like a slippery slope and the easiest and simplest decision that I feel is truest to your experience is to use it while you might not have realized it was a thing, it was, and whether or not you wanted to, you were probably exploiting it too. Anyway, while I was giving that explanation, I did some shopping and now it's time to battle Rival 6. Rival 6 is pretty difficult usually, Rival 5 was kind of tough, how is it going to go? Well, I'm going to start off by spamming agility. Pidgeot can easily attack me with Wing Attack and lower my HP, but for whatever reason, it decides not to. It just keeps going for non-damaging moves, and since the one it uses most frequently is Agility, it is basically akin to doing nothing, since I'm still going to outspeed and one-shot with Fire Blast. Next comes out the Rival's Rhyhorn. We knock it out with Fire Blast. Two down. Growlithe is next up. Body Slam, I don't think the critical it actually mattered, because the badge boost glitch is probably doing more anyway. Regardless, three down. Execute, please. Don't miss. Very good. That's going to be four down. Just Alakazam and Blastoise to go. We obviously outspeed and one-shot Alakazam. It's all up to Blastoise for the rival now. We are going to get that pesky level up. Hard to avoid because of all these high experience Pokemon. We get a crit, which is great. Blastoise is paralyzed. It hits me with Hydro Bump, and I survive. There is no badge boost glitch. I just survived on my normal stats. However, I'm going to need luck to win. Body Slam does not knock it out. Withdraw, I win. <laughs> All right, well, that was a bit of a cheeky victory. However, that said, had I manipulated my experience points better, I would level up after Blastoise and thus would have had more attack, more special, you know. But regardless, a win is a win is a win. Very exciting stuff. We have gotten through this part of the game as fast as any Pokemon I can remember in a long time. Fully evolved or non-evolved. Great job, Ponyta. And the celebration can end right here. Because the Elite Four is going to be the worst. I usually hype up the first battle with Loralee a little bit more. I'm not even going to bother doing that. I have a plan for Loralee. I'm going to set up three agilities versus Dugong and then hopefully sweep through her team with Fire Blast and Body Slam. The problem I ran into is that after I defeated the Jinx, I leveled up. 
And Fire Blast did nothing to Lapras. So, that's obviously not going to work. I'm going to make my way to the power plant, actually, and level up one more time. In addition, I'm going to collect a couple items that are going to be very useful to me. The final rare candy. I will have collected all 12 for one of the first times in any of these runs. I usually skip one, either the one on the power plant or the one on SSN. I've collected all the possible rare candies that I can pre-elite for, as well as collecting three PowerPoint ups, the last of which is located in the power plant, in order to make sure I have eight power points for Fire Blast, because it's going to come in handy. I'm going to try a bunch of different things, but for now, I'm going to level up all the way to level 70. And let's see now how the Elite Four goes. It starts off amazingly. I use Mimic and I didn't mean to use it here. I, in fact, wanted to use Agility, so I start thinking, should I reset? And then I realize I probably don't need to. Instead, I'm just going to modify my strategy slightly. I end up setting up all three Agilities. Dugong got a Growl in there. Fire Blast is ready. One shots Dugong. I don't think the crit matter. Cloyster has lower special, I believe and we knock it out with Fire Blast. Slowbro just has Withdrawn Water Gun, which it can use, and Fire Blast does a lot of damage. Water Gun does not. We're able to knock out Slowbro. With the Growl, I don't think Body Slam would one-shot Jinx anymore, so I have to go for Fire Blast. Thankfully, it hasn't missed yet, and we are almost at Lapras again. Please don't miss. All right, we got five Fire Blast hits. That is pretty unlikely, a mere 44% chance for that to occur, give or take. But we did get it, and we've made it to Bruno. Bruno is pretty easy, it's why one of my Twitch emotes is Easy Bruno. That said, he might prove a little bit of a challenge to Ponyta. The biggest issue is that I need to go for Fire Blast at least against the Onyx, because otherwise Body Slam will do nothing. I hit again and knock it out. Hitmonchan, I'm pretty sure I need to go for Fire Blast, and I do knock it out in one hit. That said, I'm really pressing my luck here. Seven consecutive Fire Blasts, we're getting into really unlikely territory. For Hitmonlee, I want to see whether Body Slam will knock it out. That's very good. It has worse defense than Hitmonchan, though. So knowing I can go for Body Slam is very helpful. We do have to go for Fire Blast against Onyx because, well, I think that was a misclick. It's hard to remember whether it was or wasn't, but regardless, you see how little Body Slam does. Fire Blast knocks it out easily. Finally, we have Machamp. And, surprise, surprise, I believe that is nine consecutive Fire Blasts without a miss. While that is pretty unlikely, it's not as unlikely as you think. A 1 KO move in modern Pokemon is 30% accurate in a competitive battle, and the odds of this are 24%, so not that much worse. Still, not Oz I want to bank on going forward, but hey, we've made it to Agatha pretty quickly. And here's where the run gets horrible. Because I only have one move I can hit Agatha with, Fire Blast. And it doesn't knock out the Gengar. Beautiful. It misses with Hypnosis, which if that hit, that would have been bad. And I did get a lucky burn, so I decided to start setting up Agility, hoping it would knock it out. It didn't. And unfortunately, after I set up my second one, it goes for a retroactive super potion. So I have to go for Fire Blast again. I actually misclick and go for agility, and it misses hypnosis, so that's lucky. Finally, after 10 consecutive Fire Blasts, I get a miss. Thankfully, it goes for Dream Eater. I am able to hit, so that's not bad. 11 out of 12 hits, pretty darn good. Gengar is down. I think I should one-shot Golbat with the Body Slam. I don't, and it goes for Haze. Uh-oh. Haze not only eliminates my badge boost glitch, but even the badge boost I'm supposed to have. I'm supposed to have 12.5 normal. That's now gone. That's really, really bad. I go for an agility just to get my regular badge boost back, and thankfully I get a retroactive super potion, knock out the Golbat. This is not looking good. I go for Fire Blast, and of course, in a time I can't miss, I get a miss, Haunter does not, and I'm asleep. 
I wake up turn one though, and it went for Dream Eater. Okay, this is getting pretty crazy. I miss again with Fire Blast, there's the luck. And I get hit with Hypnosis again. Okay, this seems about normal now. This time I don't wake up turn one and it confuses me. Great. I do wake up turn two and there's the Dream Eater. Okay, this is just getting ridiculous. I hit myself in confusion, but it goes for Dream Eater again. Okay, I mean, not the worst case scenario there. Finally, I snap out of confusion and I hit with Fire Blast. But we are running low on power points. Not a great sign. I need to go for Body Slam against Arbok and that crit came in clutch. One Pokemon left and it cannot put me to sleep. I go for Fire Blast, it confuses me, not a big deal. I hit myself in confusion, it goes for Dream Eater, okay, like I said, not worst case scenario. I go for Fire Blast and <laughs> we won! Alright, I think you guys can see how many ways that could have gone horribly, but it's pretty good that we actually got a good battle my first time. Because this was the Pokemon that I was worried about. This is why I battled all those extra trainers. The Gyarados that is leading off will always go for Hydro Pump. I have no idea if I even survive or not. And if I don't, that's really bad. So everything we've done to this point leads to this one battle, this one move that also has a 15% chance to miss. Can Ponyta clutch this out and achieve pre-evolved Pokemon immortality? One way to find out. I'm gonna go for agility in order to raise my attack and my special. Hydro Pump hits? Oh, I kind of misspoke earlier. I actually wanted to survive with over half health because I'm gonna go for Body Slam. I get the Paralysis, but it knocks me out with Hydro Pump. Yeah, I didn't just want to survive one Hydro Pump. I actually wanted to survive two because there's lots of other tough Pokemon. Oh no. I'm actually not sure what I'm going to do. There's not a lot I can do. It's not like I can mimic anything. And again, 11 attacking moves. None of them help me. The two types we have access to are Fire and Normal. And let me tell you guys, getting back to this Gyarados, that's not easy. Because every single trainer can beat me. Laura Lee, we've already seen, beat me. Bruno can beat me. Albeit, if Fire Blast misses, if you go for Body Slam on the Hitmonchan, it can go for Counter. That can knock you out. Machamp can use Submission while it survives and crit. That can knock you out. Agatha, I don't even need to explain the countless ways. Agatha can beat you. At four times increased speed, it can take up to 20 minutes to make it back to Lance, only to have the exact same thing that happened before happen again. The chance of two consecutive Hydro Pumps hitting or a critical hit is probably something like 80%. I'm not really good at math to figure out the exact odds are. I know the two Hydro Pumps hitting is 73%, but then you have the chance that at least one of them is a crit. It was bad. And leveling up at this point is really difficult. Part of why I would lose to Bruno is that when you're trying to level up by battling the Elite Four, you can't waste your elixirs. And since Fire Blast is the move I'm using this entire time, you might have seen me constantly using elixirs in that first run. Because of course I have to use them. When you switch to Body Slam, you can't even defeat Agatha. And if you use your elixirs up, you won't have them for the real attempt, where you actually have a chance of beating not just Lance, but the champion. So you end up being stuck in a loop that can last forever. It's frustrating because at first, you kind of try to just brute force it. You hope that if you just get a little bit lucky, things are going to work out. But then after all that luck, you make it back to Lance at a higher level and you still lose. It's so aggravating. And there's only one thing that tells you that this is not consistent. That while it was possible to win then, it was not meant to be. You need to level up more. There are no different moves. There's no other strategies. 
Ponyta's moveset has finally become an obstacle. And I can keep trying to brute force it, but all I was doing was trying my patience. So I did what I had to do. I leveled up a little bit more and I went on a run that looked promising. Once again, I set up the three agilities versus Dugong. And while I got a miss with the first fire blast, I was able to knock it out. Then the cloister, even the slow bro, but I used body slam a little bit and it was annoying, but it worked at the end. Jinx, I had to use fire blast and thankfully I don't miss versus Lapras and I make it to Bruno. Now you can tell this is an attempt I'm really trying to defeat the Elite Four because I use my elixir, meaning I'm going to reset if I lose here, losing all my progress. Against Bruno, I go for Fire Blast against the Onyx and the Hitmonchan because of the counter thing. I even use it against Hitmonlee because why not? Onyx number two, same thing. And it is now enough to one-shot Machamp without any badge boost. That's pretty good. And I level up at the perfect time, so I could use Badge Boost versus Agatha if I so choose. Of course, setting up versus Agatha can be a real nightmare. No pun intended. I get a miss with Fire Blast. It gets a miss with Hypnosis. Great. I miss again with Fire Blast. It hits with Nightshade. That's not great. Even with all my leveling up, I still am not able to one-shot with Fire Blast, but I do get that clutch burn. It goes for Dream Eater, which misses, and it's so close to being knocked out by the burn, but it's not. I decide I'm going to try and play this a little safer. We've run out of Fire Blasts a lot during Agatha in my failed runs, and that's the number one way I've lost to her. So I'm going to mimic Nightshade, so I have another move that actually hits her Pokemon. And thankfully we get the Retroactive Super Potion. Nightshade doesn't have a chance to miss. That is one down. Because I have Nightshade, I can afford to waste a Fire Blast against Golbat. It doesn't miss, and that is two down. This time, I don't miss against the Haunter. That is three down. Arbok, I get a crit. Didn't need that. Four down. Now, against Gengar, I probably should have used Nightshade because it would be a 2 a KO anyway. I go for Fire Blast, hoping it's going to be a 1 a KO, but I don't get a crit, and I knew it wouldn't one-shot. It goes for Toxic. We have made it back to Lance for what I believe is the fifth time. All four of my attempts have ended at Gyarados and you've seen a bunch of them. I don't know if attempt five will be different. We are at a higher level. Truth is, I have yet to see a Hydro Pump miss. I would like to know what would happen if it did miss just one time. Will this be the time? Let's find out. I go for agility. It goes for Hydro Pump and it hits. Surprise, surprise. I go for Body Slam. It's doing over half, that's good. It goes for Hydro Pump, it hits, and I live. This worked, guys. This is what I wanted. Body Slam knocks it out, and now the question is, can I somehow fluke my way to a victory here? Please one-shot, please one-shot. No. Okay, agility's all right. Hopefully that was a range, but that's not a good sign. Two down. Please, please, please. No, it wasn't a range, or maybe it was another agility. This is not looking good. All right, Aerodactyl. Both my moves are resisted, and I level up, so no badge boost glitch, fire blast. That did a lot, but obviously wasn't going to one-shot. Burn is cool, and supersonic hits. Of course it does. Please don't hit yourself in confusion. Oh, that sucks. But, like... It's worse than you think. Because what this shows me is unless I get a Hydro Pump miss, I don't think I can win. I was trying to avoid playing for a 15% chance. But in the end, it seems like that's the only way to do it because I don't have enough HP otherwise. Thankfully, there is a bit of a silver lining to leveling up. As I level up, it's not just Lance that gets easier. There were a lot of annoying little things that could happen in other battles that do go away with these level ups. Like Lapras's Hydro Pump being a little less scary, or a Fire Blast Miss versus Bruno being a little less scary. But the most important is Agatha. Agatha is just so luck based. And realistically, the first Gengar being one shot by Fire Blast would be ideal. 
Funny enough, I know that I have perfect IVs in special. You can reset for those with Ponyta. It's just a formula to figure out. Some Pokemon you get a range, but Ponyta, I actually reset for the very best. So perhaps I could have gotten more stat experience, but I know that this, at least genetically, is the best Ponyta I could be using. I actually get pretty abysmal luck in this battle versus Agatha, and yet somehow, even while being paralyzed, am able to make it right back to Lance. This was the first time I made it to Lance on back-to-back -back attempts. I was pretty hyped. Question is, Will it actually result in a victory? Once again, I set up an agility, but this time, it misses. Oh my god. Could we win? I go for Body Slam. It hits with the Hydro Pump, but I have more than enough HP in order to win. I think this is it. Because Body Slam wasn't one-shotting, I'm gonna mimic Hyper Beam and hopefully Dragonair cooperates. It does go for Hyper Beam, but that didn't do very much, and because it has to recharge, I actually get the ability to use another agility, which is kind of nice. I go for Body Slam since I know it'll knock it out, and then I can Body Slam the next Dragonair, and we're back at Aerodactyl. You may have noticed I didn't level up. I actually manipulated my experience points just before this attempt, so that wouldn't happen. Hyper Beam does not one-shot. If only I'd used an elixir. I didn't have any power points for Fire Blast. But here's the thing. That was part of the strategy. That's right, guys. I was hedging my bets. If I won with Hyper Beam, so be it. But I was not actually attempting to win that time. If you notice the footage, which was very fast, didn't use an elixir a single time. I was trying to get this attempt. One more attempt where I could be at a higher level and hopefully then I would actually be able to get past Lance. I got much farther on the last attempt that I intended. Perhaps I should have just used the elixir, but I was worried it wasn't enough. And to be fair, I had reason to believe that. I wasn't able to consistently one-shot Dragonair with one agility and Body Slam. That's not good. Hyper Beam didn't do enough and perhaps Fire Blast wouldn't have. What I can tell you is that the extra levels we just gained are undoubtedly going to make the Elite Four better. And I might not win on this attempt, mind you. We might need to go all the way to level 90. Who knows? This is a really bad Pokemon. The other fire Pokemon we've used are Flareon, Charmander, and Moltres, all of which had other things working in their favor. Ponyta, by far, is kind of in the most challenging situation, especially move pool wise And yet, it's doing okay. Some of you might wonder, why don't I just save? Because that's not how I like to play the game. Every challenge on YouTube is arbitrary, guys. You can use items, you can use the shift mode where you get to automatically switch. Pokemon, for all its weaknesses, its greatest strength is you can play however you like. This is the way I like to play. It feels fair. It feels fun. It's like the Battle Frontier. You gotta beat the hardest trainers consecutively. No breaks. Why would I use Double Team? Sure, I'd win much earlier, but just due to dumb luck. I want a consistent strategy. Leveling up, yeah, it's not the greatest, but it just proves that Ponyta is not as good as some other Pokemon. I want to see what a consistent Ponyta strategy looks like. And right now, we're seeing one, because we've made it back to Lance again, our third consecutive time, and this time, we're at a much higher level. We set up an agility like always, and it hits with Hydro Pump, shocker. Body Slam, oh my god, oh. It crits, but just misses knocking it out. We do get the Paralysis and the Retroactive Hyper Potion. Uh, okay. Gonna go for Body Slam again. It's paralyzed. We're gonna have 117 HP. And the extra levels, we should knock out the Dragonair in one hit, we do. And that is why I did this. That is the reason. More consistency. Once again, we knock out Dragonair, it all comes down to this, Aerodactyl, 
Fire Blast. Please don't miss. Yes! Oh, well, that did, well, burned, but that did just about the same as Hyper Beam. It goes for takedown. Burn would have helped there, but it misses. And we're at Dragonite. Now, I doubt Body Slam's gonna one-shot. It doesn't. Goes for agility, and I think we win. Looks like yes! <laughs> okay, guys. Okay. We've made it to the champion. First time! It's been a while. I've been at this for 45 minutes. Almost as long as the entire run. And we've never made it past Lance. What else is there to say at this point? This has been a gauntlet. All that's left to do is battle the champion and hope for the best. And then play the sad music when we inevitably fail. Fun times. I decide to set up an agility because what's Pidgeot gonna do? Set up Sky Attack? I'll at least have a turn to attack it. Goes for Whirlwind. So, might as well set up another one. It goes for Wing Attack. Base 35 power in Gen 1. No problem. I decide not to press my luck, however, and I go for Fire Blast, which does thankfully hit. Best animation in the game. And it knocks out Pidgeot. For the record, you can't turn off animations in this battle, so we get to see how awesome Fire Blast looks. Big plus. I need to one-shot this Alakazam? I do one-shot the Alakazam. Two down. Now, I knew I was going to level up, which is why I didn't use that third agility. I thought about setting up against Rhydon, opt not to. It goes for Horn Drill, which doesn't affect me because I'm at a higher level. I think about what to do next and go for Body Slam and Crit. I don't think that would have one-shot, but I didn't want to miss with Fire Blast. It was a tough call. Hey, it worked out. All right, only three left. Our canine is pretty scary. I'm going to go for Body Slam and it's paralyzed. <laughs> yes! Yes, yes, yes! Okay, okay, two Pokemon left. One of them's Executor, which literally just have Stomp, Barrage, and Hypnosis. And that gives me an idea. Gonna mimic Hypnosis. Blastoise is gonna be tough. We put it to sleep, we win. The key is, please don't put me to sleep, it does not. Oh, this is good. I don't even care that it critted. Yes, we hit with Fire Blast, guys! There is a 60% chance I win. I am so pleased right now. Please hit Hypnosis. It all comes down to this 60% chance. Well, this sucks. And there's Hydro Pump and oh, okay. That's unexpected. I didn't think I would live that. Okay, we have another chance to win. Oh my God, that hit. Oh my God, it's not over because it woke up first turn. This is the worst game. This game sucks. Please, for the love of God, work. Okay, part one is good. Part two is good. Now just stay asleep. Body Slam does about a third. It's asleep. I win. I win. I win. Body Slam again. Oh my God, I forgot it has full restores. Oh my God, this is the worst. All right, third time's a charm. And okay, well, what was I going to expect? And I... Okay, withdraw. This is going crazy. Crazy. No way. This is... <laughs> don't even know what to say. But it has more defense now, which is not good for me. At this point, I might as well go for Fire Blast, which does hit. It's doing about the same Body Slam was, so okay, that's good. I'm gonna go for Body Slam, and it's still asleep, which means it didn't use a full restore, which means I win! I win! I win! I did it! <laughs> I'm so excited about this. <laughs> This wasn't even that big a victory. I'm at level 80. <laughs> Whatever, man. It's the little things in life, you know? I mean, 630? That's not bad. That's not bad. Now, this is a bit of a hard one to place on the tier list, actually. Because in terms of time, it seems to be in the Mankey Rattata tier. But in terms of level, it's way closer to the Charmander Ekans tier. So where do I put it? I'm gonna put it in the Charmander Ekans tier, and I'll tell you why. The sheer difficulty of the Elite Four, and how inconsistent it proved to be until level 80, to me trumps the time. The time largely is because the middle was so easy, but the beginning and ends were so difficult, especially the Elite Four. I haven't had an Elite Four this inconsistent in a really long time. Having to rely on Fire Blast was just brutal. That final battle was absolutely crazy too. 
With that said, there have been some changes behind the scenes to my channel, which will allow more videos to come out far quicker than ever before. Very excited about that. At this point, I respect if you need to see it to believe it. So, let's just wait for the next video. Hopefully it won't be too long, and you'll be pleasantly surprised. Thank you guys for always supporting me. There have been a lot of struggles during the past two years, and you guys have made things just so much easier, so I can't thank you enough. I know how many of you really appreciate my videos, and it means a lot to me to read all your kind comments. And that's all I gotta say. Take care, guys.